first rule of new business, none of the old rules apply. My career has taken me from Wall Street to corporate America and Hollywood, and I've created marketing initiatives for billion dollar brands and founded multiple startups. I'm Damon Diamore, the CEO and founder of Wayfounder, and this is New Rules for Business. I'm here in Santa Monica, California to talk to Tracy, the CEO and founder of Tradesy. While most people look for the new rules for business, she's throwing the book out completely. Let's go check it out. Tradesy is a buy and sell marketplace for women's fashion. All of my friends and I had the same problem. Our closets were overflowing, but we felt like we had nothing to wear. The average woman has only worn about 20% of the apparel in her closet. That's 80% of every woman's closet essentially existing as dormant assets. We've been in business for 18 months and we have well over $150 million in inventory. Today, a billion dollar business sounds like it might be small. You're an all-in type founder. Can you give me some examples of what it meant to go all-in to found Tracy? The first thing I did was sell off most of my worldly possessions. So I sold, of course, my clothing, the car I had at the time. And I rented out my bedroom on Airbnb and slept on my couch so that I didn't have to be distracted with like a side job or a day job. I was pretty extreme in how all-in I was. I just knew that so many businesses fail, especially in the startup and technology space. Even if you're 100% all in, you're not guaranteed to succeed, but if you're not 100% all in, you're pretty much guaranteed to fail. A lot of people say, if you're not in your 20s, and you don't know how to code, and you're not an engineer, you're really not a founder and we can't invest in you. So how did you go convincing investors that you're gonna build a marketplace? I had no technical experience, I wasn't a coder, and I didn't even know how to use Excel. And I'm a woman, which is a little bit unusual. I'm in the minority for, for tech CEOs. The way that I convinced investors to back Tradesy was that I came to them with traction. I knew the odds were against me. I knew I couldn't raise capital in the beginning because I hadn't proven myself. So I started a smaller site in a more focused vertical, just a weddings marketplace before I did fashion. And I started with weddings because it was a smaller market that I felt like I could get more traction in more quickly. Got the company to profitability at my kitchen table, which is the same table we're sitting at today. And from there was able to raise capital because I had proven myself in a smaller vertical. An old rule of business would be spend a lot of money on focus groups and research firms and consultants. The new rule is you can do all that yourself, either through the internet or through customer interactions. Mm -hmm. So how did you, for a low budget, go out and do all of your customer development so that you knew what to build. The fact that I was building a product for a market which I am a part of gave me some really nice early insights because I am the customer. I was able to kind of skip through some of the more convoluted logic that I think business people apply to things like this and actually really get inside the customer's head. It's just about constructing logical tests, learning little things that make small differences in your product, and suddenly all those little differences add up to massive growth. And that, that was the process for me. I think there's no magic bullet to customer development, and a lot of people want to believe that there's something like attaching a celebrity name or releasing a feature that you work on for four months that's just going to change everything. I just tend to take the opposite approach where very small iterative changes where you ruthlessly measure the results. If you can do 10, 15, 20 of those every month, you can't help but win. This interview is going to inspire a lot of entrepreneurs to go and start their own business. Are there any tricks of the trade that you would suggest to them to try in order to make their path a little bit easier? I did all of our PR via Twitter all by myself and landed upwards of 30 TV segments and major national news articles over the course of about a year. Anytime I would read a story or see a video of a story that was relevant to the category that I was operating in, I would look up that reporter, retweet them a little, so we became friends, and then, and this is the hard part, I would write them a 140 character pitch for the segment or article. My hit rate was phenomenal. For almost everyone that I got to follow me back and receive the DM, we got a segment. But it's really something that you know you want to dedicate an hour a day or so to doing all your Twitter stalking, which was how I thought of it. To me, you're the perfect example of the new rule that there is no limit to what you can do today. I'm an example of someone who didn't have any education in what I'm doing, and I've been at it for five years and I've come a, a decent way. The accessibility of information that we have today is nothing short of a, of a miracle. Of all of Tracy's scrappy strategies, renting out her bedroom and sleeping on the couch was my favorite. What would you rent out in your house in order to fund your startup? Tell me in the comments below.
Remember to like and share this video, and click here to check out more inspiration for businesses at American Express Open Forum.